It is time to make justice your priority so that history can record what happened, so that we can stop it from happening again, and to truly honor survivors like Nadia, who have already suffered too much. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the German government for inviting me to address the Security Council today on the topic of accountability for sexual violence in conflict. It is an honor to be included among such a distinguished panel of speakers. In preparing to deliver these remarks alongside Nadia, my client, my friend, and somebody I greatly admire, I thought back to a conversation we had when we first met. Nadia told me of her suffering at the hands of 12 different ISIS men who enslaved and brutalized her. She recounted the murder of her mother and brothers. She showed me threatening messages that she had received from ISIS on her phone. And as she did this, it occurred to me that she never expressed fear for her life, for her safety. Instead, that day and ever since, she has spoken of only one fear, that when this is all over, the ISIS men will just shave off their beards and go back to their normal lives that there will be no justice. I am legal counsel to Nadia and to other Yazidi women and girls who were kidnapped, bought, sold, enslaved, and raped by ISIS. And my brief is the pursuit of justice. But it was clear from an early stage that this was going to be a challenge. The world's powers were focused on a military solution and nobody wished to speak about justice. So we fixed on one imperative, we could not allow the evidence to disappear. So Nadia and I came here to the United Nations and we asked you, the Security Council, for help. We asked that you send a team of investigators to Iraq to gather evidence of ISIS's crimes so that one day trials would be possible and justice would be within reach. After many months of advocacy, with strong leadership from the United Kingdom and support from Iraq and the United States, Nadia and I sat together in this chamber and watched 15 hands go up and Resolution 2379 come into force. We welcomed the appointment of an eminent lawyer, Kareem Khan, to lead the investigation team. And we celebrated the moment four weeks ago when the team, working alongside the Iraqi authorities, began to exhume mass graves and identify the victims' remains. When it comes to war, should we really care about justice? British Foreign Secretary Anthony Eden took the view that, quote, the guilt of the Nazis is so black that they fall outside any judicial process. Others thought that show trials or mass executions would be the better response. But the United States, under Presidents Roosevelt and Truman, pushed for trials because the US said it was important to create a record of the Nazi system of terrorism. And the American prosecutor who opened the trial said he did so because, quote, the wrongs which we seek to condemn and punish have been so calculated, so malignant, and so devastating that civilization cannot tolerate their being ignored because it cannot survive their being repeated. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Nuremberg moment, your chance to stand on the right side of history you owe it to Nadia and to the thousands of women and girls who must watch ISIS members shave off their beards and go back to their normal lives while they, the victims, never can. Nadia has been given many honors since she decided to bravely speak out about the horrors she and her people have suffered. She has received titles, awards, words of thanks, promises of assistance. But she would trade her Nobel Peace Prize in a heartbeat for the chance to get what she really wants, the chance to face in a court of law those who murdered her mother and her brothers and those who brutally and repeatedly raped her. It is time to make justice your priority so that history can record what happened, so that we can stop it from happening again and to truly honor survivors like Nadia who have already suffered too much. Thank you.